Hey, today is November 14th, 2016, and I am going to first start off the practice with some vibrato practice, because this is the sort of the new thing I'm trying to learn here. And uh, I was watching, uh, you know, more of the video series online uh, on YouTube about other people teaching the vibrato. So I'm picking up a lot of, you know, different sort of pointers here and there, but I was trying to... I was uh, trying to point out that, you know, I think unless you actually try it and see how it feels for your finger on the string and moving in that sort of fashion and how your arm is moving, your hand is moving, and your fingers are moving, um, that it's kind of difficult to really understand what you're, what they're doing when they're doing a vibrato on, the, on some of the YouTube lessons. Um, so sort of really coming back to trying on the cello and then re sort of reviewing it um, on, the, uh, on the videos or asking for your instructor for, for sort of tips on how to continue. Um, so it's that sort of iterative process of back and forth of um, experimentation on your own to see how your, your fingers and your hands and your arm adapts to it. Um, so I was watching, the, uh, watching those videos again today and and I sort of just started practicing even without the bow on um, just you know, pressing down on, on with my index finger on the D string here, uh, you know, making sure my, that my elbow is um, a little bit further out rather than tucked under. Uh, and then just sort of pressing down on the string and seeing if I can use my elbow as a pivot point and just sort of slide up and down on the string while maintaining contact with my thumb but not gripping with my thumb against the back of the neck. So I was sort of just practicing that for, you know, until, you, until your index finger gets tired. I've been, I was practicing that just a few minutes ago before I started the recording. You know, just sort of get used to this motion. And then when I when that got tired, I then move on to my middle finger and the number two finger. Again, on the same string. And I'm just continuing to sort of drill in this motion into my arm and into my hand and into my finger in order to get used to being able to even do this motion, which is a is a new motion for me um, as a person and also as a beginner cellist to be able to try to do this because you know I'm just starting out uh, earlier this year and I have not gotten in my first position practice and in my practice of the Suzuki Cello School Volume 1 ever did any types of this type of motion right and I'm going to move on to my fourth finger here and just draw that in there. Oh, this one here is a little bit more difficult. So I'm just trying to, you know, get used to this entire motion. I don't think you can really sort of explain it to someone, especially a beginner like myself, on how to really do it without having me really experience, you know, the pain in the tips of your fingers when you rub it against this string here and to try to get your whole arm into the motion instead of try instead of an, a wrist twist right um, to use the elbow as a pivot point and try to keep the arm and hand as steady as as you can while you're moving it and you know rubbing your finger up against the string. So I'll move on to my my pinky here. And even as I switch the, the fingering from the index finger down to the pinky, the contact point where my thumb is is actually starts moving. So I'm not sure if that's if that's natural or not. When I'm on my index finger, my thumb is a little bit, you know, directly on the back of the neck. Um, maybe I can move it this way so you can see. 
um, it's, it's more on the back of the neck and then as I move to the middle finger it's still back of the neck and this actually might not be a good demonstration maybe I can sort of shift my chair this way hopefully hopefully that comes off okay yeah maybe, maybe I'll, I'll try it this way here as if I'm facing this way so you can see uh, my thumb here is still on the back of the neck middle finger it starts to move and the way that it's starting to move is from the back it starts to move over to the right so eventually when I was doing my ring finger you'll start to see more of my thumb here and then when I use my pinky you see how my thumb is really wanting to come across to the right side of the neck and I think that's partially because it's more difficult to try to pinch um, my pinky and my thumb uh, not pinch, that's not the right word to use but to help to have my thumb provide some sort of base even if it's just a little bit for my, for my finger to try to do this versus uh, open it up a little bit more extending that thumb a little bit it feels just feels a little bit more natural um, so it starts to become like this whereas the index fingers are more aligned. So I'm not sure if that's something I need to correct because if I try to correct it, oh, that's a lot harder to do. So I'm gonna need to either drill that more or yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll try to drill that more and try to keep my thumb in the in sort of more or less directly behind the neck so that it doesn't start to travel out to here. We certainly don't want that. So let's see what happens uh, when I add in the bowing and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so I'm gonna add in the bowing to the vibrato exercise that I was doing earlier where I'm just, I'm just using my elbow as a pivot point and I'm just sliding on this string. I'm just really getting a pretty wide vibrato and I'm not really aware too much yet about how much pressure I'm actually putting on this string whether or not it's enough pressure in order to keep the string down or maybe it's not going to uh, really um, produce the correct tone but I'm mostly doing this just to get my fingers and hands and arm to be used to this really strange motion. I mean, what else in your life do you do you experience pain at your fingertips while you're trying to oscillate your arm and press up against the string at the same time? It's like the only thing I've ever really experienced is trying to do the vibrato on the cello, so it's pretty alien motion. So I'm gonna use, go ahead and put the bow down. Again, I'm using the D string. And I'm just gonna try to keep this as steady as I can. I noticed that earlier that even keeping the bow and arm steady is quite difficult when you're so focused on trying to get your arm to do the vibrato. So I thought if I practice just that vibrato motion without the bow, whether or not that would become a little bit more ingrained and more part of my subconscious and quote unquote muscle memory to be able to do such that I can even keep a, uh, such that I can then do a steady bow on the string. So, Without further ado, let's see what sound we make here. So I'm going to start off with index finger. Get that nice and revved up and... You know, 
was I, even I I've, I can probably review later on the video, but I can already tell that when I'm doing this without the bow, it's more or less consistent. But as soon as I hear what sound it makes, I can sort of feel my hands hesitating, my arm hesitating, in terms of this this motion. It starts tightening up just a little bit, and it's, I guess it's the response of, of me hearing the tone, um, and, and then my automatically my left hand starts to tighten up, and that vibrato sort of tightens up a little bit more. I'm expending a little bit more energy, and also, like I was just saying, that my bowing becomes inconsistent at that point. I s almost seem to like stop the bow just just for a moment as I'm hearing this oscillation, it's almost like and my bow wants to also oscillate, so it wants to go na 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 instead of just like, you know, letting the bow arm do it do its work. And let the os the vibrato hand do its work. So let's move on to the second finger here and let's see if we can focus on keeping this steady as I introduce the bow. <laughs> keep my eyes actually looking at my hand in order to sort of will it to continue moving. Don't pay attention to what's going on up here. You just continue moving in a steady pace. And it's kind of a strange thing to think about, but you know, it's like uh, patting your head and rubbing your belly and trying to get them to both move at the same time. Now, you know, even when we're just uh, playing the, the notes. Um, I mean, that took some sort of getting used to and trying to get them to be coordinated. And once you get used to that, it's more or less movement here and pressing. So this movement here, once you get used to that, introducing a different sort of axes of movement, at least for me, because I haven't gotten out of the first position that much, to start trying to do something like this, this hand completely gets distracted. So I'm trying to will it to stay steady um, as it does uh, its work. I want it to, the left hand to do its work in order to somehow create a bit of a vibrato sound. <laughs> And then the pink D. practice that over and over I'm try, I try to practice it more consistently um, in order to sort of separate those two things um, or allow them to become a little bit more independent 